Uh, good morning, everybody. Today we're doing another type of titration. This one is not going to be with two things in acid and a base that are already dissolved, but the goal this time is going to be to try to find the concentration of this sodium hydroxide, a base that is dissolved in water. We know approximately what the concentration was. We measured it with a volumetric flask. We really were only able to get two significant figures, though, because of how it was created. Uh, we'd like to know with more precision what it is, and so what we're going to do is we're going to react it with a powdered acid. Because the powdered acid we can measure out on the balance with more precision, and then we're going to dissolve that in some water. We're going to see how many moles of acid are in here. We can calculate that based on the mass, and that will tell us how many moles of base have reacted. Then we're going to divide the number of moles of the base that have reacted by the volume of this that we've used, and that will give us the concentration of this base with more precision. In this experiment, the acid that is being used to titrate is called KHP, which, if you're thinking of elements, you might assume stands for potassium, hydrogen, phosphorus, but the P in KHP does not stand for phosphorus, but Now phthalate is something that's much more complicated than phosphorus. So KHP is not just three atoms, but it has a structure like this. Where the potassium is here, the hydrogen that it's referencing is here, and the entire rest of this is called phthalate. So the phthalate ion looks like this, where it's got eight carbons, four hydrogens, and four oxygens. The oxygens are arranged in a group coming off of a carbon to be two carboxylate groups. The hydrogen phthalate ion is a phthalate with an extra hydrogen added on. It gets added on to an oxygen here, and that means that it is going to be a weak acid. This hydrogen can be lost in reactions. To make a potassium hydrogen phthalate substance, an extra potassium is added to balance the one minus charge. but is only attracted because of ionic bonds. So really in this lab, it's going to be that the hydrogen phthalate ion, which is the acid, is going to be reacting with the base, sodium hydroxide. And it's really only reacting with the hydroxide part of sodium hydroxide, so we'll eliminate this. And what happens in this reaction is that each hydrogen phthalate ion will lose a hydrogen acting as an acid and give it to the hydroxide ion. So now this becomes a water molecule and the hydrogen phthalate ion is now just a phthalate ion. 
and there are still potassium ions and sodium ions floating around that I eliminated earlier because they aren't really participating in the reaction. Right, we're, we're over at the analytical balance to weigh out our powdered acid. So our powdered acid is something called potassium hydrogen phthalate. You can see its molar mass, its formula weight, is 204.23 grams per mole. Its formula is here. It's an acid because it loses that hydrogen after the potassium. I want to weigh out approximately 0.45 grams. It's all right if I'm going to be a little bit over. I'm going to zero out the balance. Now, one typical source of error when you're using KHP is that it is hydroscopic, and so it absorbs moisture. So I'm trying to do this quickly. We had kept it in a drying oven overnight to take all of the moisture out to ensure that this mass reading is just KHP and no moisture from the air. The next step is going to be to dissolve the KHP in water. And it doesn't matter how much water is used for this because we'll know the number of moles of KHP based on the mass and its molar mass. So what I have here is some acid-base indicator, phenolphthalein, we abbreviated PPN. We chose phenolphthalein because we are titrating a weak acid with a strong base. And the expected pH at the equivalence point is going to be around 9. Phenolphthalein has an effective range of between 8, a pH of 8 and a pH of 10. So this is colorless in an acidic solution and it turns a magenta or pink color in a basic solution. So neutral, uh, acidic to neutral, it will remain colorless, and then when the environment in the beaker finally turns basic, it will turn um, uh, magenta color. And that's what we use to determine that we've reached what's called the end point of the titration. The end point is literally uh, separated from the equivalence point where OH- and H- have exactly neutralized each other. The end point is one drop of additional base beyond that equivalence point will become the end point and it will turn the indicator pink. So right now I'm going to add a couple of drops of phenolphthalein to the acid and you'll see that it remains colorless because there's lots of H plus in there. Okay, so now I'm very gonna, very slowly going to start adding the NaOH to the KHP and just let it drip in kind of at a steady pace. And what you'll notice here, if you were to get right up over this, looking down into the beaker is that where the OH- is dropping into the acid we're getting little flashes of pink because there's lots of OH- until it disperses. But it disperses very quickly at this point because the amount of OH- far 
uh, is far below the amount of H plus that's available from the KHP. You can see those little flashes of pink occurring and they quickly dissipate as they get neutralized or as the OH minus neutralizes an H plus from the um, KHP. Remains colorless at this point. So nice steady drip. I've already let in about six mils of the base at this point. As we approach the equivalence point, what we're going to see is that the flashes occur, uh, they become brighter and they last longer. They take longer to dissipate and go away. And that's because we're slowly using up all the available H plus as we add the OH minus to this solution. So you can already see where those flashes are becoming larger and they're lasting a little longer. So at that point we have to be really careful not to overshoot the equivalence point. We've got to slow things down, but we can still keep going here for a little while longer. So just passing the 10 mil mark on the burette at this point. Still getting roughly the same amount of pink showing up every time a drop goes in, although it is spreading out to the edges of the beaker at this point. Less and less H plus is available from the KHP. The OH minus is neutralizing those H's turning into water. This is what's called a Bronsted Lowry acid base neutralization reaction. Okay, so you can see those flashes of pink lasting longer and longer. Still some H plus there. Okay, so I'm going to slow it down. Looks like we're almost at the equivalence point, but you'll notice that it's cleared up. So now I'm going to slow it down and go drop by drop. Really careful with the burette. And you want the phenolphthalein color, the indicator color, to last for at least 30 seconds. If it goes away in that 30 second window, you're not quite at the end point. The end point is when the indicator changes color. The indicator, the PPN, is a weaker acid than the KHP. So when you add OH- to this beaker, that OH- goes after the strongest base wants to go after the strongest acid if it's available. So the KHP being stronger reacts with the OH- first. When the KHP is all gone, the only thing left in there is the weaker PPN, a very weak acid. And so what we can see here is that this is now the end point of the titration and the equivalence point and the end point are literally separated by only one drop of OH- added. So it, uh, we are there. The titration is over. We can read the volume. Let me turn this around so you guys can see it. Okay. And if I were reading that, I'm just going to just reposition this a little bit so I get a better look at it. And I need a little piece of white paper. Okay, there's the bottom of that meniscus, and it looks to me to be all of 14.9, and just past the 9 a little bit, maybe 14.91 would be the correct uh, reading for this volume.